So recently I did a little modification on my car that a couple of you were asking about how I did it. That modification simply was that uh, center piece right there where the shifter is and the uh, mode selector is how I got it to be black. Well, simple enough, obviously I just painted it and actually plastic dipped it. But to get to it, to get to the point where you can do it cleanly, you obviously have to remove it and it's quite involved. It doesn't just come right out or pop right out. You have to actually have to remove the whole center console. A bunch of you were asking me how to do it, so I'm gonna make a video on how to do it. So the car that I'm going to be doing this on, just for reference, not that it really makes a big difference from any different types from model year to model year, at least not to the best of my knowledge. This is a 2021, uh, it is a 3LT Z51. Again, not that it makes a huge difference, but just to give you some reference. So the first thing you want to do is disconnect the battery. Like I said, the computers in these cars are pretty finicky, and if they lose any connection with each other while you're doing anything, they kind of sometimes have a tendency to freak out a little bit. And if it doesn't see it when it starts up, you might have a check engine light, and then if you don't have the computers to clear it out, then you could have a problem and so on and so forth. So first thing you want to do is go ahead and disconnect the battery. To get to the battery, real simple. These two pieces on the side, you just pull these. I've already pre-pulled them. It's just these four clips that hold it in. And then go to the other side as well too. Again, pre-pull that one. Be careful because these clips do have a tendency to snap pretty easily. Then just pull up right here and pull up right here. You don't have to take the whole battery out. Just get to the negative cable, which is right here. It's a 10 millimeter. And I'm just gonna go ahead and loosen it up and just slide the negative cable right off. Just like so anything else, once you get it off, be sure to just tuck it off to the side so that way it doesn't, uh, doesn't accidentally reconnect while you're doing anything. So, side and that's it. Now very important or not as important but do yourself a favor don't close your hood because then your front trunk release isn't going to work. There is a manual cable override. I'm going to actually cover some of those manual overrides in another video. Now for myself and just for lighting purposes to make it a little easier obviously I took the top off and put the windows down so you can see a little better. First thing you're going to want to do is take out these center console pieces. You're going to take out these then these side pieces are going to come out. You're going to take some pieces out from underneath the dash over there too. And there's going to be a handful of bolts to get this thing out. But you see one by one and I take it apart. This thing comes out pretty easily. It's just a speaker cover. There's just four clips. One here, one here, one here, and one here. Just pull on the two front ones. And it'll come on out. Pull on the back one. Pop. And that one as well too. You got these four clips. Here, here here and here, that's it. I have taken this out a couple of times, so it did come out kind of loosely. Um, but the first time you take this out, it is going to give you a hard time. They are very strong in this car. All the interior clips are very strong. Use a pry tool if you have one. So what you want to do is just kind of get up what you can and then slip it in there and twist it and get it up and get it as close there as you can. Otherwise you will break a couple of them here and there. Now again, same thing with this. You got to take out this thing. This has two wire connections on it too. It has a speaker up here, and then it also has the wireless charging pad if you have that option. Again, just one, two, three, four clips. Give it a pull, and it will come out. There it is. Disconnect the top speaker, and disconnect the bottom. Now there's a little red retainer on the top and on the bottom. Just slide the retainer down and then just go to the clip, press down the black tab and it'll come right out. Okay, next you're gonna wanna ultimately get out this panel right here. Now to get to that panel, that's gonna allow you to get some of the stuff on the inside off. First you gotta take some couple trim pieces out right here. First thing is this panel right here. I just use a little plastic trim tool, two clips, pops right out. There's your two clips. And then you got to get this panel out. Now, again, plastic trim tool, just kind of slide it in there, work, work your fingers in, create a little gap, and it'll just pry right out. Okay? This has a good number of clips on it, six of them, one, two, three, four, five, six. You do have to line up all six when you get it back in. I'll cover that when I'm putting it back together. It can be a little bit of a pain to get back together, but not that big of a deal. Next, you've got uh, two seven millimeter bolts you got to get out. 
One is right here, and one is right here. Just remove those two. Okay, once you have that out, then you're gonna be able to pull this thing out. There, there's about five or six clips that hold this thing in. When you pull on it and get it out, be careful. These clips will break if you don't pry them properly. So what you do is go to the bottom and kind of work your way across, just little by little, and it will come. Once you have it out, just connect the electrical connectors. Not that many of them. You got the uh, heads up display if you have that, and then the uh, button for the parking brake, and then the dimmer switch. Little gray Christmas tree down here. Just pry that out with a trim tool. And then use either a little hook or a screwdriver and just disconnect these little electrical connectors. Again, just a little red tab, pull up on the locking tab and it'll just come right out. You gotta find the little black tab to push on it to pull it out. There it is. There's this one. And then finally, this one's a little bit of a pain because it's upside down. So if you save this one for last, it's gonna be your best because you can twist it around. There's a little gray tab. I would say take a right angle hook, go in there, grab the gray tab, and pull it back towards you. That will unlock it. Once you unlock it, it is a little bit of a thing to sneak in to get. Oh, jeez. There you go. And then you just hit the little black tab in there, pull that down. So just give you a little bit of a close-up view of that tab that just gave me a problem. Here it is. Get it to focus. Come on. Okay, so you have that little gray tab. You gotta slide that back and it's gonna slide towards you. And then you have that black button right there and that's gonna be the release. So it's kind of hard to see because it's tucked in there and it's kind of like upside down. So, but that's just what it looks like up close. Okay, once you have those out of the way, these side panels right here, you're gonna take these out. Now that this piece is clear from there, you can reach behind and get it. These are just held in by tabs all the way across. So start from the front, pull gently, and just work your way down, and it'll come on out. and then just repeat for the other side. So in order to get this side off, you gotta do a couple of things. There's, there's panels on both sides to expose bolts to get to the center console. So you have one 10 millimeter right there. You're gonna go ahead and take that out. Okay. Now once that's out of the way, you have some clips and you have some hooks on the top here that kind of hold this thing in. So pull it from the bottom, gently but firmly at the same time. It's gonna kinda make you feel weird, but it will come. There you go. All right, and then see there's these little like hooks on the top too. Then once you have that out, you got one, two, three, right there. And then a fourth bolt right there. Four 10 millimeter bolts that hold it on this side. Four on the driver's side, 
five on the passenger side, and then there's also an additional cover on the passenger side, but I'll show you that when I get there. So there's four 10 millimeter bolts. You got one right here, two, three, and then the fourth one is in the back right here, straight down. They're all very obvious. You'll see them very easily. That's what they look like. They're all the same. They're all the same size, so don't worry. Don't worry about mixing them up or anything either. Now over here, the first one you're going to want to take out is this 10 millimeter bolt right down here. Right there, and that's going to give you access to some wiring that you can get to all So take that out, and then you're going to just go up on this, and there's going to be a couple of tabs behind it that also hold it in. Just give them gentle pulls. And they will come out for you. There we go. Okay. Now it's going to show you some of the wiring that you're going to have to disconnect. There's not a whole lot. There's only really one big major connector, but you are going to have to undo a couple of clips. So, to get to those, you have a little gray tab right here. Use a panel puller, pop that out. You're going to kind of want to work it back and forth a little bit, so that way you don't break the Christmas tree behind it. Then there's two of them that are held in with this. Just go right behind it, and again, just work it out, and it'll come right out. And there's a black one right up in here, too. Same thing, side to side, work it, it'll come right out. Then you gotta disconnect these things. This is a USB port, or a USB cable, excuse me, so this is your connections into the center console. Just squeeze and pull out. And then there's this thing. Again, not that big of a deal. Little screwdriver, push your red tab back, unlock it, stick a screwdriver in between here, and just give it a gentle twist and then just flip it back and it'll come out and that's all you got to do once you have that then you can work on the other four bolts that are holding this thing in to get it out you got one here one that's tucked up in here two or excuse me there's five there's six on this side including the cover so there's one tucked up in here one here that's two three four and then the fifth one's in the corner Once you have all those bolts out, all you gotta do is pick it up from the back, just lift it up, and just slide it from the back. And there it is. Again, the first time you take it out, it might resist on you a little bit, and kind of you're gonna have to kind of pull on it a little bit, but that's about it. Now to get this thing apart and to get that top cup holder off, you are going to have to take it apart obviously carefully. Do your best, but there's basically just a, clips, a bunch of clips and screws that hold it in. To get to the clips, it is in your best interest to just remove the HVAC controls. It's going to make it easier for you to get to them. Now to get them off, there's going to be nine T15 screws, okay? One here, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight and nine. You don't have to take these off to get it off, but it makes it a lot easier because then once you take these screws out, you can just kind of wiggle it out. There is a little like lip here that it kind of hooks into to get to it, but just finagle and do it. This corner is going to stay in because there's a little tab that kind of goes down on it. You'll see what happens when it comes out here. But then you'll see right here, you can get to your clips that keep it in a lot more easily. You got one here, one here, and then there's two on the other side. 
So then you can just pop them up. Also take out a T25 screw that goes into the bottom of the cup holder right there and this thing will come up. If you have to, open up the console, sometimes it makes it a little easier. Pry up from there because you've got to get that little corner piece out too. Sometimes as you pry them, the clips pop back in, so you're going to have to kind of be mindful of that. It is a little annoying. Hey. Then you can see now it's loose. Now at this point, what I want to do is disconnect that little transmission connector I was talking about, the trans selector I was talking about. Take that gray tab, pull it down, get to that black clip, out it comes. Now you gotta disconnect the mode selector and the traction control buttons and uh, if you have them the front lift and the front camera. So again, same thing, there's just a little red locking tab. Pull that red locking tab out. Squeeze the black tab. And there it is. one just has some tape in the way that I had to get to. Pull the tab, squeeze, pull, and there it is. Oops. Now it's out. Now you can dis disassemble the pieces from here. Once you have this out, you can go ahead and take your shifter out. These are just four uh, T25 screws here, 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 and here. Wrong size. Here's my shifter. Then, to get the mode selector out, it's two T25s up top. And these four T15s that are down here at the bottom. my mode selector. And at that point once these four screws are out that comes loose. And you can see I already painted this so that's the way it looks already. If you need to get this thing out which you're gonna have to to paint it you're gonna have to just slide this out. So you got one clip here and two clips on this side. Just take a screwdriver wedge it in there and kind of pry it back a little bit. And again, you're gonna kinda of have to work it a little bit of a side at a time here because you take one out and then the other one wants to slip back in. But once you caress it and get to it just right, it will come out. There it is. Now, what's nice about this is you're gonna worry about your orientation because this thing only goes one way. It doesn't spin all the way around like it did on a C7 when you ever you change the modes when you were changing in there. It would just cycle all the way around. But they thought about that. There's two lines right here and one line right here. So this thing only goes back in one way. So it's impossible to put it back in uh, misoriented. 
So the next thing we have to do is we have to separate the shift selector so we can isolate the pieces to paint them or do whatever you want, wrap them, whatever. Okay, so you got all these clips right here and then you have some on the other side too. This bottom piece right here, this is the all the electronic portions of it. The top piece is all just plastic pieces that actually push on the little buttons inside. You'll see what I mean in a second here. To get this off, hold it on its side just like this because otherwise when you take it apart things might fall out. So. Just again, start from the top and kind of work your way down, okay? And then do the same to the other side. Hold on, do it as you're doing it, because you don't want it to fall otherwise. And again, it's going to want to reclip as you're doing it, because it's just the way it is. Then, once you get all of them, separate it now this little plastic piece on top is going to stay there keep that this is all your electronics keep it together okay set that aside somewhere safe that's your actual shifter now underneath you have all these you have all these pieces are loose see this white piece is loose this little black piece will come out and again this piece and this piece are the same so if it falls out and you lose it it's okay it'll just go back in with no problem okay now you're going to have to separate this also too, okay? Now to separate this, you have to get these tabs and do the same thing you did on the other side with these, okay? Work it in there. And just work it out very gently. Now you have that gap. And then do the same to the other side. Trying to keep that gap still on the other side because remember it's going to want to try to close as you are prying the other side. It is a little bit of a pain, but just got to be a little patient with it and it will go. There it comes. The manual button is always going to pop out. It's just what it does. Lift it straight up, and there that is. Now take this and leave it face down right there. Don't lose the manual button because you're going to need that. Obviously, you can see mine already needs to be repainted. Now these pieces only go in here one way. These are the pieces that came out from the shifter, the black tab that I was pointing out before. Just put those back into place and leave them there for now. So when you have the buttons, this is what they'll look like. They come in from this side and again, they're only going to go in one way. Each way is, you can see all three of them are unique and they only go in one way. So then once they slide in, that's it. And once you have it flipped over, you'll see where each one of them is. That's your park. That is your, should be your drive, and that'll be your button for manual. Or, I don't know, I'm getting disoriented. Park, and then, yeah, that should be drive, but you'll see when it goes back together. Maybe I'm wrong, I can't remember. It only goes back together one way, it's the only thing that matters. Once you have that, now you have this piece. Now this piece, taking it apart, can look a little intimidating, but it's really not that bad, so. Let me see if I can get a better view for you here. So these pieces, they can look a little intimidating. So what you're going to need to do is, there's this black piece right here, and there's one here, one there, and one there. You can really just go in at it with a pick, and it'll pull right up. So just go in that from the side with a pick, go in from the inside out, I'm sorry, go from the outside in, that's right, it's the other way around. Pry it and it will just come right out, there it is. See if I can get it to focus here. Oh. Okay, it's that one. Same thing with that one. And I like to try to keep these in the same place, taking them out, so I know exactly where to go when I put them back in. Okay, 
Now, holding the rest of this thing in here, you have three pins. One pin here, one pin here, one pin here. Just go in from the side, and you see the pin, and you'll just push it, and it'll just come right out. Once you have all three of them pushed, you'll see the exposed pins right there. Pull them out. There'll be a little bit of grease on them, okay? Then you have those. Now, you have to slide out these buttons. This black case right here, again, just go from the side, You'll see where it clips, pry back the little clip. Do it on both sides, again, you're gonna to have to work it one side or the other, and it lifts right out. Now, here's gonna be a real big pain, it took me a little bit to figure out to try to get it out. Now these, once you have all that out, this will slide around, it'll kind of, it'll move on its own. So you can slide it around like that, but it's not gonna slide forward. So what you have to do is take this little piece right here, grab it, you might use, you might have to use a pair of pliers and a rag if you don't want to scratch it, and it just lifts right out, okay? Take a look at the orientation though, you see how it's sloped down, so it only goes back in one way. So try to keep it in that way when you take it out, so that way you know which way to put it back in. If you forget, just look down in there and see which way it slopes and you'll be able to get it. But just save yourself a little bit of trouble. So now on this, Again, same thing, just use a little pick to get this front piece out. Admittedly, this front piece is much more of a pain than the back one. So you are gonna have to fiddle with it for quite a little bit, but it pops out just like any other clip. It's just compression springs on both sides. You just gotta kinda have to work it a little bit and see what you're doing. Just be careful and it will come right out. Again, same thing, little crystal type looking thing, slides right out, put it to the side. Now this will just slide right out also too, because this is the park button, just takes that pin, comes right out. Then once these are out, it'll just slide out from the bottom. And this will also just slide out from the bottom. And now your piece is free and clear. And then you can put this paint it, wrap it, do whatever you want to have it look however you want. Then, go ahead and uh, paint whatever you want to paint and we'll put it all back together. Obviously I'm not going to show you how to paint things because, well, it takes too long. So paint it and then put it back together. Okay, so now everything is ready to be put back together. One thing I didn't show before was that I just kind of took care of the little silver pieces down here. I just had to pop this out of here. Simple enough, it's just these spring-loaded clips. You just press them down and it pops right out. So I get it back in, just put it back into place, and it snaps right out. Easy, ready to go. Okay, now, first thing I'm gonna do is reassemble the shifter here. So, <clears throat> take this piece again, Going to go flat down now the driver side the drive button excuse me is going to be the first to go in slip it in through the bottom bring it up to the top i'll take one of the pins and put the pin back in just to keep it in place okay now i'll take the little crystal thingy put that back in and then I'm going to take the black plastic cover that clips over that, and that just clips into place also. Okay. Okay, so after you have that in, take the neutral button and put it in place with the reverse button first. Then slide that back into place. Take your pin. You got to line up those pins because it's got to go through both the reverse and the neutral. get that slide in there we go push that in all the way and you take this thing the little crystal or whatever you want to call it slide that back in and snap that back into place now too now your park button slide that in line that up Oh, 
going to slide in from the front. Sorry, slide it in from the front, or the back rather. Then line up the pin there, and put in your pin. Then from there, just take these four black things again, just slide them in, so it'll all just click right in. Inside in, and then push the outer part of it. Okay. And there you go. And now this thing is all back together. Okay. Now, then from here, you put all this back together. Now this is going to slide back together from here. Remember, all these parts over here are what's going to touch against these. These are your actual selector buttons. So, oops. You're going to want to take this and put it to the side a little bit, but don't tilt it all the way. Don't move it all the way over because otherwise he's going to fall out from the bottom. But you do have to remember to put the manual button in first. So put that into place. Okay. And then slide everything together kind of from the side. It's all going to go in this way. Line everything up. Should feel it all line up. And it snaps right in. Well, there. I'm going to take this piece, slide that up, and again, kind of go together from the side. Make sure you have all, all these pieces in here. You should have one, two, three, four, five. And then just make sure you have the manual button in right there, too. So once you have those five in, make sure this is still flat. Come in from the side so that way nothing falls out. And just squeeze it together. Make sure it's together on both sides. And there you go. All back together. And then just give everything a quick function. Just make sure it all feels right. Push the button. Okay. Yep. Yep. There we go. So the manual button, you see it popped out a little bit. When I push it down, that all that's all it took to just click it back into place. So now park, reverse, neutral, drive, manual, all back together. So now this is all back together. So now take this thing, put it all back together. This only goes in one way. Flip it around till it slides into the point where it only goes in one way. Two slots on the bottom, the one slot on the top. There you go, that's it, okay? And now this is going to go back together too once you put the whole thing back together. So now we bring this piece back over here. Okay, so now we're getting ready to put this back together in, but or back together, but this has to go in first. So you put this over the top, just like that. Okay, flip it over. You're going to have the two T25s that go in the top up here. And then down here, we're going to put the uh, little hand ruster. Put that in from the top. That lines up. Flip it over and then you got those four. Now these are the T15s, the smaller screws. Four of those. Okay. These two on top. Fifteens. Okay. Now the shifter is going to go in. Put that in because it's going to overlap on that. So now that goes in there. And then you have your four T25 screws. the only thing you should have left are your nine t15s that hold the console back in and your one t25 left for the cup holder and now that thing is ready to go back in now bring the 
console back over. <clears throat> I'm going to plug a couple things in here. So I'm going to plug in the mode selector. Then you have to plug in the traction control, front lift, and uh, camera. And then you also have to plug in your transmission selector. So you're going to have to kind of bring this down a little bit to get this harness to reach the transmission selector. So once that's there, plug that in. And then push in the gray tab as well too, so it's locked in place. Now, take this and line it up. Get all the clips to line up. And then before you snap it down, see if I can get a better view here. Hang on. Before you snap it down, just remember down here you have this little pin that has to line up in this little slot right here. So take this thing and line it up in there first before you put that down, otherwise you're not going to be able to get it in. side as well. change is still rattling around the compartment as you can hear. Don't forget your cup holder screw on the bottom. Actually screws into the cup holder from the bottom. Keep it in place like this. check make sure you have everything plugged in all the clips are in all the screws are in I have my transmission selector in mode selector and my uh, traction control and camera and everything the other thing you want to be mindful of too is when you put this thing back in it's this tube right here it's for AC vent it goes all the way in travels back you just want to make sure that lines up it's pretty hard to put it in and have it not be lined up but just another thing to take a look at so and now this thing is all ready to go back in. Okay, now to get this thing back in, all you gotta do, bring it up a little high, kind of put it down, guide it into place. And you're gonna see these little metal tabs down here. This is what it screws into. Just make sure the black part of it is gonna be on the outside of that. That way it lines up. If you line it up on this side, it'll generally line up on the other side. You have a little guide pin up here too. Push it forward so it sits in that guide. Okay. 
Here's a good, here's a good. Get to the back. And there it is. There's just a little guide pin up in the front here too. Sometimes you gotta line that up a little bit. You'll kind of feel it kind of clunk into place a little bit. Then once it's there, reconnect your connectors down here. We'll put these bolts back in place and then we'll move the bolts on the other side as well. Okay, remember there's going to be five bolts on this side. Just line them all in by hand first and then give the thing a little push forward. So that way it all lines up. Get one, two, three, four, five. Then you'll set your big connector right here with the red lock, the USB cable. And then you got one Christmas tree right here, two for this big connector and then the gray one that you popped out there before. Now you go to the other side. Okay, so now we got this, and there's four bolts in here. Tighten down. I already started up, so I'm just gonna zip them down. One, two, three, and then that one, four. Then from there, Got to put the panel back on here that we took off before, the cover panel. Okay, here's that little kick cover panel from before. Remember, it's got these little hooks. We'll just line these up. And then push the snaps into place. Then there's one 10 millimeter bolt that goes in right here. Okay. Now the bars were here. Pop this thing in place. This is all just clips. I like to start at the back and work my way forward. Got the dash cover down here. Reconnect all of these three connections down here. You have that one weird upside down one for the itch you for the HUD if you have it. Don't forget the locking pin and then the dimmer switch and the parking brake. And there's also one little gray retainer clip that in too. And then you have a couple of clips that you line up down here. And just push that back into place. Okay, then you got two seven millimeter screws down here. And you got these 
two little trim pieces. Just kind of line that up. You're going to just line up all six of them to make it work. It's going to be a little finicky, I'm not going to lie, you're just going to have to play with it, but it will go. Okay, and then just repeat on the other side. Pop this panel back into place. Got a millimeter screw down here. This channel. And then the two pieces in the center. And then put these two back in. Reconnect the battery. And that's it. You're done. From there, make sure you have no codes. If you do have some codes, just simply take the battery. If you have a code clear, clear with the code clear. But if you don't, take the battery, disconnect it. I would say leave it disconnected for about 5-10 minutes, reconnect it, you should be good to go. Hope this was helpful. Enjoy.